When doing a painting, you sometimes know what is going to be the main focal point. For this particular landscape painting, it was very obvious. It was all the sheep. Hello, my name is Charlembos. I go by Bob, and I'm not your typical painter. And today, I am going to show you how I painted a bunch of sheep. And how did I paint all these sheep? Very simple. One by one. It took a very long time to do this painting, especially the sheep and all their little details. So full disclosure, this is going to be a two-part video because in its original length, it would have probably been close to an hour. So stay tuned for part two eventually, and then one whole video dedicated just for the pack leader. Also in this video, I tried to show the reference photo for each section I'm painting, so you have an idea with what I'm working with. Anyhow, the first step was to do a nice underpainting and to kind of establish where all the sheep are going to be. And after that came the detail. And one by one, I painted each sheep. And starting with this fella here. So, let's get started with sheep number one. So I start with a sheep that's the furthest away from the viewing plane. The first step was to sketch out the head and then blot out where it used to be with the color of grass. And then I applied some lights and darks to kind of sculpt out the sheep's face. Nothing too detailed because this is just the beginning stage and also because he's all the way in the back. When painting these sheep, something very important is to have a nice division between them and an illusion of separation. And one way I tried to achieve this is by using lights and darks next to each other. In ways, I increased the darkness at the borders and also used thicker paint for some of the fur that overlapped the darkness later on. The idea is to create an illusion of sheep with a sense of volume and for them not to be silhouettes. So lights and darks play a very important role in sculpting them. I kind of began working on the texture of the fur of the sheep, but since this one is kind of in the back, it's going to be more on the blurry side. But I'm using lights and darks to give the illusion of the bumps and soft texture of a sheep's fur. Something important to keep in mind when painting is the importance of what you do first and last when it comes to layering. I began painting some more grass in order to reshape the sheep, but also because I'm going to paint the hair over the grass, particularly because the hair is closer to the viewing plane than the grass itself that's behind the sheep. But keep in mind, there are going to be other situations where the grass will be in front of the sheep. Now that we got some of the grass painted, I began to work on some of the fur that will overlap the grass. Once again, I'm using lights and darks to kind of shape out the fur of the sheep, even if it's at the edge. This way there's a nice sense of separation and a sense that there's strands of hair. I began painting another face of a sheep. Again, I'm using simple lines and shapes of color in order to build up the structure of its head. Once again, lights and darks are playing an important role building it. For particular things like the ears, I'm making sure the edge of the ear is very bright while there's a sense of dark contrast right underneath it to give the illusion that there's a shadow and also that the ear sticks out. I carefully looked at the photo to sculpt out the face with paint and tried capturing little details like certain hairs that are out of place. I felt it was very important to capture the identity of each sheep as if it was going to be a portraiture for each one and for people to be able to identify them in real life. When painting the bodies of the sheep, it's a little easier than actually painting the faces. A few strands of hair in the wrong place won't make that much of a difference, but an eye or an ear or a mouth not painted correctly 
or off will make the face stand out in a very bad way. So in other words, I didn't copy the bodies of the sheep exactly as I saw them in the photo, but mind you, I was trying to be as close as possible. My goal was just to get the sense of volume and mimic the texture of the fur and also to capture certain strands of hair or distinctive features that stood out and I liked. That way each sheep had some sense of uniqueness. So once again, lights and darks and occasionally I was using some greens in order to cut into the sheep and define the fur by using the background colors. I also used one of my favorite darks, a lizard crimson with viridian, in the border where the sheeps meet. It's very important to get a nice sense of division among them, and that dark with the light hair that's going to overlap it, it's going to help create an illusion of death. Obviously, the easiest sheep to paint were the ones that didn't have their heads or legs visible. But that did not mean I didn't spend any attention to detail. I wanted to make sure they didn't look like a silhouette or a puff of white on the canvas. So I paid attention again to the fur, especially the texture, and establishing a sense of volume. Now let's talk about how I created the texture. Like before, I'm using lights and darks to establish the illusion of the texture of the fur but also a sense of volume with the rest of the body of the sheep. A very good tip is to paint while the paint is still wet. You get nice effects such as softer lines and that's very important for the beginning stages of the fur because you will have later other hairs that are going to overlap and you want some softer edge hairs that are going to be behind sharper ones that are going to stand out more especially the ones that are very bright and are getting hit by direct sunlight. So lay out some bodies of color, not too detailed, but to shape out the sheet and the folds of hair, and then go into painting some of the hairs and blur if necessary with a dry brush to soften them, and then in a way, repeat. This is something I pretty much did the entire time until the very end when I used wet paint on dry to get the highlights and the sharper detail. Here I'm painting another face of a sheep. I'll be honest, I'm not actually dissecting the head with lines in order to place the eyes and mouth and everything else exactly where they should be, but I am looking at the photo very carefully and trying to paint the sheep's face as accurately as possible. Everything from little bumps and the changes of color where in some areas it's kind of on the orange side and then gradually turns into brown. But I'm using a series of lines and applying colors here and there and then using a dry brush to blend everything in and in some ways give it a soft touch except for certain features that I want to stand out such as the ears and the eyes of course. Those will have in ways harder lines, especially the ears since I want them to stick out and the eyes so people could gaze at them. I talk a lot about volume when painting and for good reason. If you can't show a sense of volume, the image you're painting is going to be flat and a silhouette. And I am trying to avoid that with each sheep. So as you paint fur on any type of animal, Keep in mind the contours of the body. Use lights and darks in a way to shape out the sheep, but the way you apply the fur and the direction of it will help reinforce the overall sense of volume the viewer will get when looking at your painting. It might look kind of weird that I'm applying some greenish colors into the sheep's fur, but keep in mind that the grass is green and colors tend to reflect from one object to another, hence the green from the grass to the sheep's fur. Though the green stands out now, towards the end, it will be much more subtle. I'm just laying down the foundation of what I see. It might look very mindless and repetitive the way I'm painting fur, but there's a method to my madness. The way I move the brush along the bodies of the sheep, it's with a purpose, and I'm trying to paint directionally in a way to shape out the 
curvature of the body. In the early stages of building the fur, it's really more about applying the right color in the right spot and using your lights and darks in a way to kind of shape out the body. Kind of like the grass, the sheep's fur sticks out and has depth. And I'm trying to show that with lights and darks and a series of lines that kind of get blurry towards the body of the sheep and sharper as it sticks out further away. But I also want it to have distinguishable features such as a sense that the fur has clumps here and there and it's not perfectly uniform. Little by little, I also begin applying hair. It's going to be a combination of very soft edge hair and also hair that stands out and is very sharp. Choose your sharp and soft edges very wisely because in the right spots, they help with the 3D illusion in the end. And the sheep do have a lot of mass and volume. So for me, it's very important to show it. When painting fur or hair on an animal, it's helpful to use a dry brush to soften some of them and then build more hair on top of that hair. Yes, it's very tedious, but I want the viewer to have a sense of the texture of the sheep in the very end when they view the painting. Not all the hair that I'm painting is 100% accurate, but I am picking and choosing certain ones that stand out to make it more distinct again. Again, I am following the photo as closely as possible, but I'm not trying to copy it exactly as it is. More like get the impression of the fur and mimic the overall texture. And here's another portrait of a sheep. I'm not actually using any guidelines to plant the eyes and mouth and everything in the right spot, but I am following the photo as carefully as possible and being mindful of all the features this particular sheep has to capture its likeness from the photo. When trying to paint the features like the mouth, eyes, and ears, I look very carefully at the photo to have an understanding of how the head is shaped. That way when I paint it, in a way, I kind of sculpt it with lights and darks to shape out the face and head in the end. Notable key things that I try to capture are how the ears in a way are see-through. I used pure cadmium orange in a way to highlight how the sun is coming through the ears in certain spots. I'm also very mindful of the transition from lights and darks as I shape out the sheep's head, especially around the nose and mouth. In a way, they require a very delicate touch and a tiny brush as well. I am trying to capture all the contours of the face. To me, this is not just painting a sheep's head, it's an actual portrait of a sheep. Again, one of the easier sheep to paint because there's no head or legs that are visible. But I'm using lights and darks to sculpt out the fur and give the illusion of the texture that the sheep has and also volume. But one thing I'm doing different from the photo is increasing the darks in order to have a nice separation between the sheep. And later I would overlap those darks with very bright fur on the sheep that are in front of it. If you notice while I'm painting this sheep, I'm actually kind of correcting what I already painted. After doing the underpainting, you shouldn't be 100% sold on what you laid down. Make corrections as needed. And for this face, I had quite a few. Also something very interesting about this sheep's face is the way the mouth is positioned. I truly believe I caught him in the act of actually chewing food. He's also looking dead center at the viewer, so his face for the most part is symmetrical except for his jaw. There's a slight twist to it and I think it's from munching on the grass. Also because his face is front and center and not turned to the side. It's a little more difficult to paint because you have to give the illusion that the mouth is protruding from the rest of the head. One way I do this is by using sharper edges and lines around the nose and mouth. That way it stands out from the rest of the head where I kind of blur a little bit some of the other features, except for the eyes of course. I'm going to speed through this section. 
but just notice how I'm building the fur line after line. I am painting big bodies of color here and there, but for the most part, it's a lot of line work. Every sheep kind of has a different pattern on how the fur looks. This one in particular has a lot of individual hairs that stand out. I'm using lights and darks in a way to distinguish each hair from one another, but I'm also using reflective color from the grass. So you will see some green, but the more I paint, it becomes more subtle, but initially it stands out. Yes, another sheep's face. I started off with the ears because they stood out. I used orange once again to highlight how the sun is penetrating them from behind and you can see through their ears in a way. Since this face is also dead center, I'm painting very carefully and emphasizing on trying to make sure the mouth looks like it stands out in front of the rest of the face. This particular sheep also has some very distinguishable hairs on the head and I try to capture his hairdo I suppose. But painting the nose required a very delicate touch because I had to in the very end do a nice seamless blend where it transitions from the hairless textured tissue of the nose into the furry part of the sheep's face. I mentioned earlier about painting the hair on top of the grass based on the order of layers. In this scenario, I'm painting the grass in front of the sheep because the paint is more dry. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to repaint the sheep as I'm doing the grass. Sometimes you have to repaint between the blades. And I do this for other areas too, like the legs. But in this area, it's in front of the head that's grazing. These carefully placed grass blades add an extra element of depth to the painting, especially since this grass is in front of the sheep. This happened to be one of the harder sheep to paint because the head was tilted a bit. I used a series of lines and also lights and darks to kind of shape out the face. Here and there I would also repaint some of the grass in order to correct the sheep. Also. One of the more difficult things about this one is the little hairs that the sheep had. But I don't go into the little details right away. I focus more on trying to get the likeness first and making sure key details like the eyes, ears, mouth, and nose are in the right place. The body was also quite on the difficult side to do as well because most of it was exposed and lots of little hairs were visible. But just like the face, I don't go into all the details right away. I focus on building the lights and darks and certain discolorations I saw, such as a orangish brown and some very yellowish grays. Also, as I'm painting this, I felt really good that I chose a very peachy background because I like how that peach is coming through the sheep and giving certain ones a nice little glow. Anyhow, in order to detail the hair, I start applying lights and darks, but a little more strategically and very closely next to each other in order to make certain hairs stand out. And I'm also using lots of dry brushing to smooth things out and then go at it again, layer after layer. Something I don't mention much, but I should, is that I do plant where certain legs are but my main focus is really to get the hair and faces done first. I will go back later into the legs, particularly the way they respond with the grass towards the bottom. So I'm saving those for later. Now that I established the basic structure of the face, it is time to go into detail. Edges and transitions of color are very key in building the face and the likeness of the sheep. Besides all the little lines of hair, the skull of the sheep has some harsh edges, particularly where the eyes are. Also, like before, I'm trying to get some separation among the sheep and make certain things pop out like the ears. So I'm definitely emphasizing on having really sharp edges where the light hits the ears so they stand out a little. And I'm also applying some darks next to the highlights so they can further stand out. But the most trickiest light and dark transitions 
are probably going to be definitely where the eye sockets are, the nose, and the mouth. Once again, a tiny brush is very helpful into gradually sculpting those little tiny transitions that wrap around the eyes. Same for the ears, the way they fold, and the little crevices around the mouth and nose. But while sculpting out the overall shape of the face, I also have to build hair as well. I'm going to speed through this part, but the thing I'm going to point out is building the sheep's hair required a lot of work, a lot of tedious work, a lot of lines. I even went back into a lot of the lines and softened them and then building more lines on top of them. I used various different brushes to accomplish this. Everything from rounds to liners to flats. I even painted lines with a flat brush, but for the most part, they were mostly used to soften a batch of hairs so I could push them a little bit back before I go and build more layers of them. I mention this a lot, but lights and darks are very crucial in order to shape out the sheep. Since this one is clearly visible from the side, you can see how it's very dark from the bottom. And on the top left, there are a lot of highlights, probably from the sun. And don't be afraid if you have to go back into certain areas, whether it's to apply more darks or more hairs, it's part of the process. Not all sheep had a lot of contrast in their fur. This one in particular was very white, but that didn't mean it didn't have texture. It was just more subtle. So I did apply a lot of lights and darks, but I would also mute them. But I also had to, in a way, be more careful on distinguishing where the sheep is. That way the fur didn't mesh with the other ones. So once again, I used some darks to create a sense of division. But the one to the left definitely had a lot more contrast and longer hair. Sometimes even the sheep that appear the simplest to paint have their own unique little challenges. The key is to make each sheep distinguishable. And in order to do that, you have to create a sense of separation by using certain techniques such as soft and hard edges and light and dark contrast and even thin and thick paint as well to making sure they're very distinguishable and create a sense of separation so they don't appear like a bunch of hairballs stuck to each other in your painting. I'm gonna wrap up this video and speed to the end. As mentioned before, building the sheep's fur was very tedious and time consuming. But to summarize everything, it's a constant struggle between light and dark to shape out the sheep and also line work, whether it's to paint out the faces and legs or certain features sticking out from the fur such as ears. My best recommendation is to look at the photo very carefully and try to mimic the texture you see as best as you can. Also while at it, try to visualize the volume of each sheep and the mass that they have. That's why I like to say to sculpt or carve sometimes instead of paint. And also keep in mind where your light source is and reflective lights, such as the color of the grass bouncing from the ground. And lastly, pay attention to the key differences between each sheep. There was differences among them, whether it was color or the way their hair curled. And to me, it was very important to capture those differences and give each sheep their own identity. If you made it to the end, thanks for watching. Please stay tuned for part two, where I will show more sheep and also how I applied the finishing touches to this painting, particularly the highlights and little touch-ups that made a big difference. So once again, my name is Charles Limbos. I go by Bob. I'm not your typical painter. Until next time, bye.